This class is approximately 50 minutes and it will move a little bit slower of a pace compared to my normal power flows. If you are following along with the playlist on Spotify, go ahead and click play right now. Make your way to the center of your mat and then come down to a hero's pose to get started. So dropping down to your knees, you can keep the feet together and have a seat on your heels with the feet flat, or you can take the feet a little bit wider and then have a seat in between your heels. Or a third option if you wanna get a nice foot stretch, if your feet are feeling tired, um, is that you can tuck your toes under and have your heels lifted and then sit down on your heels. So any variation works. I would pick the one that's the most comfortable for you right now to get started. And when you find that position, go ahead and rest your hands on top of your thighs. Grow your spine really tall and keep your spine flat. Relax your shoulders down your back. Maybe even roll out the shoulders a few times just to release some buildup tension. And close your eyes here. Take your focus onto your breath. And with your eyes closed, relax the muscles in your face. So that includes the forehead, the temples, your cheeks, your jaw, your tongue. And as you soften some of the smaller muscles, continue to feel that release move down your neck and down your shoulders and all the way down your spine. And with the upper body relaxed, focus on your inhale, breathing in, fill up a little bit more. And then as you exhale, release it all out. So really deepening the breaths right here. Okay, now go ahead and open your eyes, but stay in hero's pose. And just find one spot in front of you to focus on. Your eyes are still relaxed, still soft here. And usually with an anxious mind, in an anxious body, the eyes are typically wandering around. And when you focus on just one spot, it sends a message to the brain to just relax and calm down. That's what we're doing right there. So go ahead and make your way to all fours. Shoulders over your wrists, hips over your knees. As you inhale, drop your belly, lift up your chest. And then as you exhale, round your shoulders. Do this two more times, really slow, full, deep breaths. Inhale, fill up your chest. Exhale, round your shoulders. One more time, I want you to make this the biggest breath so far of your day, of your practice. Really exaggerate your exhale, squeeze your navel into your spine. And then from a neutral spine, reach the right hand up towards the ceiling and thread the needle option to walk the left fingertips forward feel the right shoulder releasing coming into a gentle twist right here and then go ahead and come out of that come back to all fours rotate so that your fingertips are facing towards your knees now and three times with that breath, inhale, lift your chest, drop your belly, and then exhale, round your spine. Slow here, do it two more times. You might not be able to get as deep. You'll feel a different sensation through the forearms and get a nice stretch through the wrists. One more time, inhaling, and then full exhale. As you return to a neutral spine, rotate your fingertips so they're facing forward. Reach the left fingertips up, big stretch, and then thread the needle. Your top arm can stay bent or you can walk your fingertips towards the front of your mat. And just let your head and shoulder relax right here. Good, slowly come out of that. Tuck your toes, downward facing dog. Holding this downward facing dog for quite a few breaths right here. So you start to feel the entire backside releasing. Take a deep bend into your left knee and press the right heel down and breathe into the backside of your right leg. Good, then go ahead and switch. Good, now go ahead and start to tiptoe your toes so they come in between your hands. And just fold forward gently into a rag doll. 
Hands can stay on the mat or you can grab hold opposite elbow, opposite hand. Let the top of your head get really heavy here. See, Take all the work out of your shoulders, all the strain out of your neck. You can sway side to side here a few times. And then set your left hand down, reach the right fingertips up. Good, and you can bend your left knee here. Yeah, go ahead and set the right hand down, switch sides, left fingertips reach up. So whatever feels natural here, if that right knee wants to bend a little bit, go for it. And then set both hands down. Coming up slowly, stacking your vertebrae one at a time. Roll the shoulders down your back as you get to the top and come into a standing pose, Tadasana or mountain pose. So really tall, really strong, just like it sounds, just like a mountain here. Go back to that eye gaze, focusing on one spot. Fingertips are reaching down. And now with the fingertips reaching, go ahead and stretch your arms overhead. Draw your palms together to heart center. And then do that again. Roll out your wrists a few times as you reach your arms overhead. And then once you get to the top, press your palms together, trace through the midline to heart center. And then again, roll the wrists as you reach up. Might feel some tension loosen up in the shoulders and the arms and then go ahead and draw the palms together release into a forward fold inhale lengthen to a halfway lift plant your hands down gently step back into a downward facing dog float your right leg up keep your hips square keep pressing your right heel to the back of your room Keep pressing between your thumbs and forefingers and keep feeling the sides of your waist lengthen. Good, both legs are active here. Now bend your top knee and peel your hips open for a gentle hip opener. Any tiny movements you want to take here, like rolling out your knee or rolling out your ankle, go for it. Extend the leg straight, slowly pull forward. As you pull forward, knee in towards your chin. Set your right foot in between your hands. Drop your back knee down, release your back foot. So it's your right foot forward. Yeah, reach your arms overhead and hook the thumbs. And then pull your elbows a little bit wider. Keep lifting up through your waist and keep pulling your heart center forward. Open up through your chest. Good. Notice any subtle changes happening in the body here. Now go ahead and take the hands to either side of your right foot as you shift your hips back, coming into a half split. The focus here is on the back side of your right leg. The toes are flexed towards your shin. The more you flex them, the deeper stretch you'll get. And as you ease into this, you may be able to crawl your fingertips forward a little bit more or maybe reach uh, one of your hands to your foot. And make sure you're releasing through the upper body now go ahead and come forward keep the right leg where it is tuck your back toes underneath you coming into full expression of crescent arms reach overhead both hips are facing forward go ahead and hook the thumbs again and pull your elbows wide so same thing here it's just a little bit more challenging here in this full crescent pose make sure that your hips are tucked under so you have length through your lower spine and feel lift happening in your chest. Again, notice the subtle changes. Feel if there's any shift in energy, shifting in emotions, and then go ahead and take your hands to either side of your right foot, pull your back leg. So you're in pyramid with the right toes facing forward, left toes are at an angle. You have about two to three feet of space between your heels. Your hips are square and your upper body is released. You can always flex the toes here for a little bit deeper of a stretch. And go ahead and carefully step back into your downward facing dog position. Left leg floats up. Take a few breaths with the leg straight. And then as you feel ready, go ahead and bend your top knee and peel your hips open. Of course, any tiny movements you want to take right here, like rolling out the knee or rolling out the ankle but continue to open up, expand 
through that hip area and send the inhales to where you feel the tightness. Create more space with every move, then go ahead and pull forward. Pull the left knee in, set your left foot in between your hands, drop your back knee down, release your back foot. Coming into this modified crescent lunge or low lunge, hook the thumbs overhead. This time, hook the opposite thumb in front. So whichever way feels funny. And then go ahead and pull your elbows wide. Pull your heart forward. Arms reaching up first and then back. Yeah, so your eye gaze is forward or maybe up towards uh, the ceiling. And then take the hands to either side of your left foot. Send your hips back, coming into a half split on the left side. And then go ahead and start to crawl your fingertips forward, coming into full crescent lunge. So right toes tucked underneath you, arms come overhead, hooking the thumbs again, whichever thumb was in front before, uh, in the low crescent, keep that same thumb in front. Pull your elbows wide. Because your front knee is bent, you have a micro bend through your back knee. And keep lifting up. And now go ahead and take your hands to either side of your left foot. Pull your right foot in slightly, coming into pyramid. So it's a similar sensation to your half split. Just a little bit deeper now. Try not to scrunch up through the back of your neck. And then start to make your way back into your downward facing dog, stepping your feet back. And pause here for a few breaths. Go ahead and lift your heels high, bend your knees low, drop down to the ground. Release your feet, take an inhale, lift your chest. Then as you exhale, tuck your toes, go ahead back to a downward facing dog. Right foot in between your hands, come into modified crescent, one breath here, so big inhale, reach. Then as you exhale, shift into a half split. Okay, then coming into a full crescent, tuck your back toes, inhale, reach your arms overhead. And then as you exhale, coming into a pyramid with the hands down, the back foot comes in slightly. Go ahead and take a halfway lift right here, and then forward fold, step back into a downward facing dog. Drop to your knees, release your feet, inhale, lift your chest. Exhale, downward facing dog, and we'll repeat those four moves on the left side. So left foot in between your hands. Drop your back knee, inhale, low crescent, and then as you exhale, half split. As you inhale, pull forward, tuck your back toes, Reach your arms overhead, crescent lunge. And then from here, coming into a pyramid as you forward fold. With your breath, inhale, lengthen halfway. Exhale, back to your pyramid, step back into a downward facing dog. And then go ahead and pull forward to a high plank position. Slowly lower down, all the way down, then take your hands wider than your mat. Press into all 10 fingertips, roll your shoulders out right here. So have some freedom with this right here. Kind of just feeling in uh, to where you feel the knots, the tightness, the stickiness through your shoulders, through your upper back. Seeing if you can find a place, find a spot where you can stay, breathe, and release it. That may be drawing your right shoulder forward, looking over your left shoulder or vice versa, or you might just wanna stay with everything facing forward and you can do a few shoulder rolls right here. And then go ahead and place your hands underneath your shoulders, make your way back to a downward facing dog. Right foot comes in between your hands. Go ahead and come into a warrior one shape. Right foot facing forward, Left toes at a slight angle, hips are square. Reach your arms overhead, 
and feel your body working in opposite directions here. So as the fingertips are reaching up, the hips are sinking low. And as the fingertips are reaching up, you still keep your shoulders released away from your ears. Both legs are working here. So you have your right thigh, you're stretching through the outside of your back leg. Breathe into the stillness here. Once you find your position, just hang out here for a little bit. For me, it's one of the hardest aspects of yoga is just staying in a pose and staying still in it, holding it and breathing. But there's so many benefits if you can do this. Go ahead and take your hands through heart center, open up to warrior two, and again, we'll hang out here for a little while. So find your position, right hip is opening up, right knee is pressing open soften your eye gaze over your right fingertips keep your arms strong and flip your palm reverse your warrior stay now you'll feel a really good opening happening from the right hip all the way to your right fingertips. If you want more, just reach the left hand up and catch a hold of your wrist. And that can kind of um, help to enhance this upper body stretch here. But still be mindful of the position of your legs. Be mindful that you're not scrunching up or tightening up anywhere. Just always growing, always expanding. Side angle, right arm to your right thigh. Left fingertips reach high. And I would just stay here in this uh, basic version. Of course, you can always take a half bind or full bind if you would prefer. Keep rotating your chest up towards the ceiling. As you take your time in these postures, you start to bring more awareness into the body. You become aware of what actually happens in these postures. Go back to warrior two. Reverse your warrior and take your hands inside your right foot. Tuck your back toes. Coming into this low runner's lunge. Hands are inside your right foot. You can always widen your stance slightly if you need to. And try here to keep your back leg lifted. So I know in this one, I tend to automatically release the back knee. It feels better for me. That's what I'm used to. But it's a little bit of a mental challenge when you do a pose in a way that doesn't feel, you know, like your regular way. Keep the left hand down. Reach the right fingertips up towards the ceiling. And then set the right hand down. This time uh, the right hand is on the right side of your uh, back foot. And then you are going to come into crescent lunge. Your legs should already be in position here. And airplane arms. So sweep the arms back behind you. Keep your core tight so your chest is lifted off of your thigh. Fingertips reaching back. And as you feel ready, float up into an airplane. Chest is slightly higher than your hips. Left hip is square next to your right hip. Feel your right foot supporting you. Now take your hands through heart center and then open up into balancing half moon. Now, if your right leg is feeling really fatigued at any time, you can come out briefly, shake it out, and then go ahead right back into that posture. But we're almost done with the right side. So if you can, stay with it, continue to build that balance and strength Bend into your right knee, land softly, warrior two. Reverse your warrior.
and then take your hands to either side of your right foot. Either step back into down dog or you can move through high plank to low plank, upward facing dog, and then meet in downward facing dog. Pause here for a few breaths. From here, go ahead and take the left foot in between your hands. Come into warrior one left side. So be mindful of where you place the left foot. You can even use your hand to pull it forward if you need to. But you want to make sure that the left knee is over top of your left ankle, not over top of your toes. And then you're pressing down through the outside edge, that pinky toe side edge of your right foot. Lengthen through your back leg, lengthen through the sides of your waist, lengthen through your arms, but sink low in your hips and drop your shoulders down. Notice what your eyes are doing. Notice what your mind is thinking about right now and see if you need to adjust anything. Hands through heart center, left arm reaches forward, right arm reaches back, stretching the arms in opposite directions. Go ahead and flip your front palm, reverse your warrior. And stay in this reverse warrior. If you want to enhance the stretch, go ahead and take your bottom hand, hook it around your wrist, or just stay where you are. You can also take a half bind. That bottom arm wraps around your lower back. Good. Try not to force anything. Just let the stretch come naturally. Utilize the breath. Utilize your exhales to help release the tension. Utilize the inhales to fill up and energize your body. And then go ahead and make your way to side angle. Left elbow to your thigh. Right fingertips reach up. And creating and then filling up space right here. The top of your head keeps pulling forward. Your chest keeps rotating up towards the ceiling. And of course, your breath stays steady. If your breath has become choppy anytime throughout this practice, either ease out of the posture slightly or just return to a downward facing dog or even a child's pose or a quick mountain pose. Of course, you can hit pause on the video and come back when you're ready or just ease out for a few postures. Go ahead, back to warrior two, then reverse your warrior. Hands come inside your left foot. Tuck your back toes. Low runner's lunge. Challenge yourself to keep your back knee lifted. Notice where the knee and ankle line up. Make sure that the knee is directly over top of the ankle and not coming forward. And you probably do feel a little bit uncomfortable through that hip area. Just breathe through it. Teach your mind, teach your body that it's okay to be slightly uncomfortable. That you're okay, that you're safe right here, that you have your breath. Now reach the left fingertips up towards the ceiling. Set your hands down. Your legs should be in position for your crescent lunge. You can adjust if you need to. And in your crescent lunge, you're hinging from your waist. Airplane arms, the fingertips reaching back behind you. Squeeze through your triceps, squeeze through your core. Back of your neck is long, then float up into airplane. Palms are facing down and your palms are strong right here. So picture an airplane taking off right here. And now take your hands to heart center, open up into balancing half moon.
Land in warrior two. Reverse your warrior. And then take your hands down, step back into a downward facing dog. Or you can always flow through the vinyasa. Good. Come into uh, downward facing dog for a few breaths. And now we're going to connect those moves. So right foot in between your hands, warrior one. Open to warrior two. So you can do one breath per move, or if you want to hang out for a few breaths in any pose, go for it. Reverse your warrior, then come into side angle. So just doing what feels natural here and taking your time through every posture. Come up, reverse your warrior. Hands come inside your right foot, coming into your runner's lunge. And when you're ready, reach the right fingertips up towards the ceiling, then take your hand down, come into crescent lunge, arms reaching back for a breath or two, and then floating up into your airplane. Hands come to heart center, open up into balancing half moon. Bend into your right knee, land softly, warrior two, reverse your warrior, and then hands down, step back into downward facing dog. Or you can move through your high plank to low plank, upward facing dog, and then meet in downward facing dog. So we'll do the same thing with the left side. Remember to feel every posture. Take one to three breaths per posture and just enjoy the flow. Go ahead and take your left foot in between your hands. Warrior one. Warrior two. Reverse your warrior. Side angle. Coming up. Warrior two to your reverse warrior. Hands come inside your left foot as you tuck your right toes behind you. Flat hands here. Right hand stays down. Left fingertips stretch up towards the ceiling. Left hand comes outside of your front foot. Arms reach back behind you and crescent lunge with airplane arms. And then as you're ready, float up to your crescent lunge. Hands to prayer. Open up into balancing half moon. Right hip stacking over top of your left hip, then bend into your left knee. Land as gently as you can in warrior two. Reverse your warrior. Then take your hands down, meeting in downward facing dog. Good, smooth and steady with your inhales and exhales here in down dog. Keep lifting your hips up. Keep pressing your heels down. Start to take your feet in between your hands. You can step, you can hop, you can jump. Inhale length into a halfway lift. Forward fold release. Rise all the way up to standing. Then come into a balancing pose here. So shift the weight onto your right foot. We were just on that left leg a while. So shift the weight over to your right foot. Left foot comes on top of your right thigh. You're making a number four shape. It's a hip release right here. So you can keep the hands and heart center. You can reach the arms overhead. The focus here is balancing first, hip release second. And then once you get those two things down, you can go a little bit further into it, maybe by reaching your arms forward as you hinge from your waist or the hands can connect to the mat. After you do it on that side, just come up and switch sides. So shift the weight onto your left foot. Right foot comes to the top of your left thigh. Maybe you reach your arms overhead. Maybe you sink a little bit lower with your hips. Keep feeling the right hip open up and release. Keep breathing. And coming out of that, set both feet down, reach both arms up high. And interlace your hands, press the palms up towards the ceiling, stretch up and over to the right side. So you feel the entire left side of your body lengthen and open up here. 
then just go ahead and switch up and over opposite side yeah, palms facing up and then come back to center palms come together to your heart center rise high to your tiptoes this may be enough right here or you can come into toe stand so your inner thighs ankles squeezing together knees are squeezing together and facing forward and very slow start to lower down your spine stays flat like it's sliding down a wall. Your knees come forward and your hips drop down, hovering over top of your heels. And then go ahead and interlace your hands. Press the palms up towards the ceiling. This time, go ahead and rotate it over to the right. Twisting from your waist. Take two to three breaths on the right side. Then come back to center. Rotate over to the left. Two to three breaths. Keep balancing. Keep feeling that foot stretch. Come back to center, palms to heart center, and then go ahead into crow. So if you're not in full expression of crow, just place the weight onto your hands now. If you're coming into crow, knees come to your triceps, inner edges of your feet squeeze together. Keep your eye gaze forward, keep your core tight. You can stay in crow or drop the head down and come into a tripod headstand. any variation of an inversion that you'd like to take right here. And if you don't want to come into crow, you can always come into a Buddha squat. If you're in that headstand, go ahead and take your knees back to your triceps, come back into crow, and then everybody meet in chaturanga to your upward facing dog, to your downward facing dog. Right foot in between your hands, warrior one, and then open up to warrior two. Go then in warrior two, straighten your front leg, reach forward, and then reach down. So coming into Trigonasana or triangle with your right hand down, left fingertips reaching up. So if you're paying close attention, I am mirroring you for this next series. It's a little bit uh, easier to see this way. Go ahead and sit your left hand down, reach the right fingertips up, coming into twisting triangle. You probably will need to pull your back foot in slightly. And then go ahead and switch it out. Top hand comes down, bottom arm reaches up. Coming back into your Trigonasana triangle. And then go ahead and stand all the way up. Once you stand all the way up, catch a hold of your hips with your hands. Rotate your toes so they're facing forward. And then hinge forward from your waist. Come into a forward fold and release. You can even pigeon toe your feet slightly. You can stay in this forward fold or you have another option here for an inversion. So you can go ahead back to a tripod headstand by placing the top of your head down. Use your hands to help support you and start to float your feet over top of your hips, over top of your head. So anytime you're in these inversions and even in that um, forward fold, you're just shifting around circulation You can play around anything you want to do with the legs here. And then eventually make your way back to your forward fold. Take your time with this, coming up slowly, especially if you were in that headstand. And then go ahead and come into a side lunge. So deep lunge through your, or deep bend through your right knee. Left leg extends long. 
You can stay high with this or you can come down low. Whatever feels good, then just crawl over to the opposite side. Good, now crawl towards the back of your mat. Your left foot should be forward, now right foot back, and then come into warrior one on the left side. Find the position with your legs, feel both legs working here, and then open up to warrior two. Left arm forward, right arm back. Straighten your front leg, reach forward, tilt forward, then down, triangle. From here, twist it out so your top arm comes down to the floor. Scoot your back leg in slightly and then reach your left fingertips up towards the ceiling. Go ahead and switch it out. Top arm comes down. Reach the opposite arm up towards the ceiling. Stay for a breath or two. Then float all the way up to that standing position. Hands come to your hips. Forward fold. This time I'm going to interlace uh, my hands behind my back just to get a deeper shoulder stretch. You can do whatever variation works for you. Hands to the floor, hands to the outside of your ankles, or you can work on crawling your hands underneath you and towards the wall that is now behind you. If you have the shoulders released, feel free to drop your right shoulder down, look over top of your left shoulder, and then switch sides. If you can't quite interlace your hands, you can always take a towel or a t-shirt or anything you have next to you to help connect the hands. And from here, releasing out of that and coming into a frog pose. So you're staying low here and you're dropping the knees down to the mat. I'm going to rotate just to show you like sort of what position you should be in, but I recommend keeping the knees on the mat. Also, um, curl up the edges of the mat to make a little bit more of a cushion or if you have any pillows or blankets you want to place underneath the knees to make it a little more comfortable for you. But the focus here on, is on releasing your hips specifically like the inside, like the inner thigh area of your hips. And then if you can, relax your upper body down. You can take one ear to the floor, or you can just rest your forehead onto your hands. Don't worry so much about what's happening in the upper body as long as you can keep it relaxed. Breathe into your hip area and get comfortable here in a position that might be slightly uncomfortable. And over time, with the breath, everything starts to settle, so you start to feel relaxed here in this position that initially might feel scary or it might feel uncomfortable. And then you just start to enjoy this here. And you can stay a lot longer than you initially thought. But we're going to go ahead and come out of that frog. So um, low and slow with the frog. And then make your way into a downward facing dog. However you need to get out of that frog. Do it safely. Do it mindfully. And then go ahead back to a downward facing dog. From downward facing dog, drop down to your forearms and come into dolphin. So same position with the lower half of your body. You're just dropping to your forearms. And here's another opportunity for an inversion. I'm coming into a forearm stand. So I'm shifting all the way down to my forearms, pressing into all 10 fingertips, using the muscles in my core to float my feet overhead. And then as you come out, make your way either back into a downward facing dog or into a child's pose. 
you took the inversion, I would recommend child's pose and just resting your forehead onto your mat. Just take a few more breaths wherever you are, whether that's child's pose or downward facing dog. I'm getting towards the end of our practice right here. So notice if there's any last areas of tightness or tension that you want to release, whether that's physical tension, emotional tension, mental tension. Make your way to downward facing dog if you're not there. Float your right leg up. Peel your hips open. Same thing you did at the beginning, doing it one last time. Then work your way into half pigeon on the right side. So think about pulling your right knee towards your right thumb. Come to long arms. Find the position with the legs. And then when you feel ready, walk your fingertips forward. Release the upper half of your body over top of your right leg. You want to keep the top part of your right leg parallel with the side of your mat. So your right thigh, but don't worry so much about the bottom half. Um, you take the shin to wherever it's comfortable. A lot of people try to force the shin so it's parallel with the front of your mat. You don't need to do that. And just keep in mind that you know nobody's looking at you. That's true whether you are doing this at home. That's true if you're in a yoga studio. Even if there's mirrors, people typically are focused on themselves in their own form or they're watching the teacher. So keep that in mind if you're ever starting to feel a little bit worried about what your form might look like or if you're not going as deep as other people into the postures. Go ahead and crawl up onto long arms here. Then you can stay facing forward or crawl over to the right side for two to three breaths. Crawl over to the left side for two to three breaths. Just a little bit of change in sensation here through your right hip. Then come back to center, stay here, or bend your back knee. Reach your left hand behind you and grab what you can. I'm hooking the foot right into that um, elbow space in my left arm. And then reaching the right arm up and overhead. I can only clasp the tips of my fingers. If you can clasp the hands, go for it. Or just keep reaching the right hand forward. Maybe take a yoga mudra right here. And carefully coming out of that, slowly transition back into your downward facing dog. And then left side, so your left leg floats up. But before we do that, go ahead and walk your fingertips towards your toes. We're gonna come into a quick forward fold right here. So coming into gorilla. Hands connect to the bottoms of your feet. Top of your head falls heavy here. And use that grip with your hands connected to the bottoms of your feet to deepen the stretch. It feels really good through the space between your shoulders, um, through your shoulder blades, through your lower spine. All right, go ahead and release that forward fold. Walk your fingertips forward, come into downward facing dog. And now we'll go to the left side. So left leg floats up, bend your left knee. Stack your left hip over top of your right hip. Stay as long as you need to, and then when you feel ready, shift forward into half pigeon, left side. So find what works for you right here. If you're having a lot of trouble um, with that left hip, you can take a block or a pillow and place it underneath your left hip to make it a little more comfortable. Keep in mind the location of your back right leg so you don't want it like flaring out to either side. You want it just directly behind you. And then crawl your fingertips forward. You can stack your forearms or just keep reaching your fingertips forward or again, block, pillow, anything you need to help relax the top of your head.
continuing to focus here on releasing anything that's causing you stress or anxiety, a lot of times that feeling can stay trapped in the hip area or the shoulder area. So notice where you're feeling any intense emotions right here. See what you need to, uh, if there's anything you need to settle, see if you can do that um, by utilizing the breath. Allow the calming sensation to take over. That's typically what happens when we hold these postures for a long period of time. And I like to remind people that eventually the calmness does take over. So whatever activity or whatever you know, you're feeling like like maybe if you're stuck in traffic or some situation that gives you anxiety, you stay there and maybe at first you feel panicked, but eventually the calmness wins. Eventually you just settle into it. It's more of a natural state for us anyway. So go ahead and walk your fingertips over to, or walk up and then walk your fingertips over to the left side. And then come forward, walk your fingertips over to the right side, two to three breaths each side. And then come back to center, stay here or bend the back knee, catch a hold of your back foot. Maybe hook it to the inside of your elbow. Reach your arm up and over, doing what you can here. One side might be tighter. And I am a good example of that. My left side is a lot tighter than my right side. And then go ahead and step back into a downward facing dog. Hopefully the hips feel really good, really released right here. Go ahead and start to tiptoe your toes forward, cross your ankles here. And then go ahead and actually uncross your ankles. Take the bottoms of your feet together, coming into a butterfly. A little bit of movement with the upper body and the breath together. So sort of similar to cat cow as you inhale, pull your chest forward. Then as you exhale, lean back and round your spine. Do that three to five times. And then eventually um, start to crawl your fingertips forward. And just soften into this posture here. Notice where you feel any resistance. Breathe through that resistance. And then slowly come up. Extend the legs straight, drop to your forearms, coming into fish pose. If you do have a block close by, I would place the block in between your shoulder blades. Drop your head back, take a couple lines, breaths right here. So that means that as you inhale, breathe in through your nose. And as you exhale, stick your tongue out and sigh out, release the breath. Again, inhale, breathe in, fill up through the chest. And then as you exhale, stick out your tongue, sigh out, release any tension. Do that three times and then release the upper body. Make your way into happy baby. One last hip release right here. So grabbing inside or outside edges of your feet. Use the grip to pull the knees closer towards your shoulders. And then make your way into a final inversion. That can be a headstand, a handstand, legs up the wall. I'm gonna do a shoulder stand right here. So I'm shifting all the way into my shoulders. Feet come over top of my hips. Feet are over top of my heart. Really just balancing everything out right here. Keep the legs extended or you can bring the bottoms of the feet together, knees wide, play around with it. Or you can just stay still. I'm going to cross my right foot over top of my left thigh and get one extra bonus hip release here. And then I'll do the same thing with the other side. Nothing is necessary. Nothing is required. 
everything is always just a suggestion. Okay, and from here, I'm going to drop back into plow. Toes fall over top of my head. And if you're in that plow position, if your toes connect to the mat behind you, release the um, support with your hands. Try to extend your legs a little bit longer, a little bit straighter. And then eventually, pull the knees next to your ears, lower down slow, one vertebrae at a time. Pull your right knee in, extend your left leg long, come into a supine twist. Right knee pulls across your body, eye gaze to your right fingertips. And then go ahead and switch sides. So left knee pulls into your chest, right leg is long. Pull your knees in towards your chest. Give yourself a tight squeeze, a tight hug. And then go ahead and release into your Shavasana. Rotate the palms so they're facing up towards the ceiling. Signaling that you're open to receive anything your body is craving a little bit more of towards the end of this practice. So it can be a feeling, it can be a word, more love, more peace, more joy. Whatever resonates with you, just breathe it in. Receive it. Then as you exhale, let go of anything that's preventing you from feeling or accepting whatever you're craving right now. And allow everything to soften here in your Shavasana. It's helpful sometimes to do a quick scan of your body, maybe from the tips of your toes all the way to the top of your head, or vice versa. With every exhale, just softening, releasing. If you feel really nice in the Shavasana, stay here a little bit longer. Let me go ahead and close this practice. So go ahead and reach your arms overhead. Roll onto the right side of your body. Pull your knees in towards your chest. And then as you feel ready, make your way to a seated position. Cross your ankles. Spine lengthens. Tailbone pressing down towards the ground. Crown of your head reaching up towards the sky. So ground beneath you, sky above you, peace within. Hands come to your heart center, fold forward. Namaste.